Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Let's go. Dreadlord Invasion is pretty good. Two mana enchantments. Beginning over upkeep. Lose one, amass one. And if our token gets up to six power, gains lifelink, so that's a great card. Storev is pretty good too. Four mana for a 5 4 trampler. With a very relevant upside if it deals damage to an opponent or planeswalker. We get to return a creature or planeswalker card from our graveyard that wasn't put there at this combat. What else do we have? Got our Dreadhorde Butcher. I think we almost have our playset now. Very good card as well. Especially if we can back it up with some uh, pump spells or tricks. Living Twister. 3 mana for a 2-5. Pretty weird card. 2 mana, discard land. Deals 2 damage to any target. And for green we can return a tap land we control to Turner's hand. Can uh, pick up additional lands we have in play to maybe chuck at the opponent's or uh, their creatures. And a 3 mana 2-5 isn't bad if we can cast it on curve. Although of course the mana cost is not the easiest. So this seems like a fine card. We've got a Ral Storm Conduit. Completed our playset now. Can be good if we have enough instants or sorceries. And then a Sorin, Vengeful Bloodlord. 4 mana for loyalty. Creatures and Planeswalkers we control have lifelink. And then it deals 1 damage to target player or planeswalker with the plus 2, of course also gaining us 1 life. And then the minus X returning a creature with convert mana cost X from our graveyard to the battlefield. And it becomes a vampire. Not sure if the vampire sub-theme has any upside in the set. Probably mostly for flavor reasons. Alright, so some good rares, especially the invasion and Storef seem like the better ones here. Let's take a look at our different colors here, starting with white. Uh, Charmstray and Sacrifice are pretty bad. We've got Lor Rune Enforcer, which is great. Promotions medium. Apparition can be very good in the right deck. A Martyr for the cause, kind of a filler two drop. A Rally of Wings as a combo trick. Untap all creatures you control. And creatures you control with flying get plus two plus two until end of turn. Don't think it's amazing, but it can potentially surprise the opponents and lead to some blowouts. I doubt this will see a ton of play. That makes it even deadlier when the opponent does play it and you don't expect it. Got a two battalions, filler at three, double prison realm. This is one of the best removal spells in the set and we've got two of them, so that's great. Uh, got a light shield which can help us with potential proliferate synergies. And gotta remember, it uh, is not a defender, despite being a light shield, it can attack. Topple the statue. Pegasus is great. Triple Crowvod is not the best. I guess uh, we've got our Wishcoin Crab back, this time in white. And then Loxodon Sergeant, also not the best. And then Sunblade Angel as a nice 6 drop. Alright, so white's pretty deep, a lot of cards. Mainly the Double Prison Realm, Lauren Enforcer, Pegasus, and Sunblade Angel as kind of the standout cards. Taking a look at blue, we've got Double Dismissal, which seems decent. Contentious Plan could be very good in the right deck. No Escape is okay. The Weird seems okay. Drake seems decent. And Dambreaker could be very good in the Proliferate deck. So blue seems pretty solid as well, although not very deep. And then in black we've got Banehound and Kaya's Ghost Form, which are both pretty bad, I think. We've got the Dreadhorde Invasion, which is excellent. Dusk Mantle Operative is pretty mediocre. Taskmaster times two is nice. Got the Lasso Tap Reaver, which is quite good for a 2-drop. Plays well in the Sacrifice decks. Yeah, Vampire Opportunity seems okay as kind of a mana sink in the late game. As a 2-1, it's not going to get a ton of attacks in, because there's so many amass tokens on the battlefield that can easily trade with this. 
But uh, yeah, the ability could be nice in a board stall. Got Bleeding Edge, which is quite good. Kind of like a mini Ravenous Chupacabra effect. We get a 2-2 two -two token out of the deal. But instead of destroying, just gives minus 2, minus 2. Still a very good card for just uh, 3 mana. We've got an Obnixilus Cruelty as a great removal spell for 3 mana. It's a great removal spell at common. Frasca's Finisher is quite good. Good to play with it a little bit in the early access events. And uh, yeah, being able to finish off Planeswalkers as well as creatures is huge. And then a Behemoth as kind of a filler 5 drop. So black is looking pretty good. Some nice removal spells. A great bomb in Invasion. Double Taskmaster. Reaver times 2 is good too. So some nice... Uh, a mass synergies potentially. And then in red, we've got double Grim Initiate. Could be okay in the Sacrifice deck, otherwise it's not the best. It's, uh, I guess, an improved Hunted Witness of some sort. The token doesn't have lifelink, but the creature has First Strike. So has some similarities there. What else? Got a Sandwich Sprint as a decent trick. Burning Prophet can be okay with enough instants and Sorceries. Also gets bumped by Planeswalkers if we play those. Heartfire plays well in the Sacrifice deck with all those uh, amass tokens. So plays well alongside Lazotap Reaver in black. We've got uh, Stone Blades as a double comma trick. The Ancrop Invader plays well alongside the Reaver as well. Blind Blast could be okay. Crunch probably wants to be in a more aggressive deck, where we can curve 2-drop into Crunch and attack the turn after. Crunch into the red zone. Spellgorger Weird could be decent in the Spells deck. Got to play with it in the early access event a little bit, and yeah, with enough uh, cards this can get out of hand. And then a Goblin Assault Team could be decent in a more aggressive deck, and uh, sets you up for Maybe some proliferate as well, although red doesn't have a ton of proliferate synergies. And then we've got a Jaya venerated fire mage as well. Five mana, five loyalty, deals two damage up to two times unless we can proliferate. And then uh, makes our red removal spells better, although we don't seem to have a lot of those. We've got Sarkin's Catharsis as an improved lava axe that can also target planeswalkers and goes at uh, instant speed. And then the Manticore as a reasonable curve topper at 6 mana. So red has some okay cards, but overall a lot less impressive than our black and our white cards were. And looking at green, we've got the Grazer as a 1 mana card that could maybe help us ramp. We've got the Giant Growth times 2 as a combo trick, pretty good combo trick. Return to Nature as the new and improved Naturalize. Probably not main decking this, but could be a good signboard card in best of three. Steady Aim, plus one plus four, untap and gain reach, so a lot of different abilities. Can catch the opponent off guard. Band together, nice removal spell in green. New Horizons for ramp and mana fixing. Bloom Hulk. Pretty solid card as well, for mana 4-4 four, four is already solid and then proliferates as well, so this seems like a good card. And then Storm the Citadel as a mini overrun and has the upside of dealing with artifacts and enchantments, which there aren't too many of, but when it happens it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, Jaya also applies to creatures, so if your creature is red, it deals one additional damage. So... The static ability on Jai is definitely very powerful, although sadly the amass tokens are black, so doesn't synergize with those. So green, not very deep, very few creatures. It's got a few good cards, but uh, overall lacks the depth that uh, black and white had. And in black and white we also have some nice multicolor cards with Cruel Celebrant, Sorin, those are both excellent. Then in blue-red we have Raal, We've got the Butcher in black-red. In black-green we have Storov, as well as Vraska, but Vraska we can play in any black or green deck. Vraska's pretty good too. 
And then in red green we have Living Twister. In red white, Tenth District Legionnaire. Didn't seem to have too many pump spells to go with it though. And a Heartwarming Redemption as well. Could be okay to kind of get rid of excess lands in the late game. And then a Nahiri, which is decent too, can also play this in multiple decks. And then a Huatli as well as the a new high alert for the set. Although I don't think we have many high toughness creatures in this pool. And then a Gateway Plaza for fixing, Mana Geode for fixing, and double Sahili Silverwing. This card could be okay, like flying creatures are a good way to pressure planeswalkers. Although 4 mana for 2 3 flyers, not the best rate. We can play it in any deck, however. Alright, so looking at this pile, the first deck we probably want to try and put together is a black white deck. We also get to pick up Vraska and Nahiri, we can play. So we get to play most of our good cards. We do miss out on Storov, which is one of our better cards as well. There's a chance we can maybe play Black White Splashing Green for like Band Together, Storov, and maybe some other cards. So yeah, I think we'll start with Black White here. So let's put all the good black and white cards in our deck. Uh, promotion, I don't think our deck is going to be aggressive enough to want this type of effect. Apparition could be good since we have a few Planeswalkers as well. Uh, Martyr could be a filler card. Don't think we need Rally. Uh, Battalion could be a filler card. Definitely want the Prison Realms. Then the Light Shield seems okay if we have a few Proliferate Synergies. Uh, topple the Statue maybe makes the deck if we need some more playables. Probably not gonna start it though. And then Trusted Pegasus is great. And then Crowvot we could play if we think we need some good defensive creatures at 4 mana. I guess this plays pretty well with uh, new Huatli, although I don't think we have overall enough high toughness creatures to really warrant the Huatli Planeswalker. But uh, who knows, I think our deck probably wants Crowvod more than it wants Sargent, since we're more of a defensive deck than an aggressive one, I think. And then some Blade Angel is great. Alright, so got a decent chunk of white cards, and then in black we have Dreadhorn Invasion, can win the game by itself. Probably don't need the operative. The Martyr is probably a better 2-drop for our deck. Double Taskmaster is great. Reaver is great. Opportunist could be an okay 2-drop if we need a 2-drop. Bleeding Edge is great. Cruelty is great. Finisher is great. And then we could play the Behemoth if we need a filler at 5. And then at the multicolor slot we have Celebrant, Surin, Frasca, and Nahiri. And I don't think we want Wantley. And then we could play Plaza for fixing, although we are just a two-color deck at the end of the day. We could play Geode for ramp and fixing. And we could play the Silver Wings if we need some four drops. Don't think we want the statue. Yeah, the promotion works well with potential proliferate synergies. Although, don't have a ton of proliferate, we've got the Apparition. The Martyr, maybe, if we play it. Do have a lot of cards that work with plus one plus one counters, but don't have a ton of cards that actually do the proliferating. So I don't know if we want to put a mediocre card in our deck just because it puts a plus one plus one counter somewhere if we don't have a ton of proliferate to begin with. Yeah, we do have a little bit of mana fixing with the Plaza and the Geode, so we could consider splashing green for Storov. And maybe band together as well if we need uh, extra removal. But we'll see how black white looks like without the splash. We'll sort our curve by actual curve, so we have a better idea how the deck looks like. So, these are all fine. Realm, we're probably not playing on 3 very often. Same with Cruelty and Bleeding Edge. So a lot of Planeswalkers at 4. Alright, so how does this deck play out? We have the Invasion, which can definitely win the game by itself. Any other good win conditions here? Uh, the Taskmaster can provide a bit of recursion from the graveyard. We do seem to have a decent chunk of creatures, so it seems uh, decent. Pegasus is going to be great. Finisher seems good. Uh, the Crowvot seems cuttable. Don't know if we need all the Silver Wings. And then a nice chunk of Planeswalkers. 
Soren does promote us to play with a lot of creatures to take advantage of the lifelink and the minus X ability. We already have the Taskmaster, so we do have a bit of overlap with Recursion. Uh, so we do want to play a decent amount of creatures to take advantage of those abilities. Then Vraska is just fine by herself. And then Nahiri, also removal, gives her creatures first strike. So also promotes us to play a lot of creatures alongside uh, Soren as well. So yeah, we do want to make sure we have enough creatures to take advantage of all these different static abilities on the Planeswalkers. And it seems to be the case. We have a lot of creatures here at 2 and 3 mana, so that's good. And then Behemoth at 5, Angel at 6. So a lot of the power level lies in some of these Planeswalkers and some of these uh, two drops as well are quite strong. And then we have some nice removal here with double Prison Realm, Cruelty, Bleeding Edge, Lorun Enforcer can double up as removal. Cruel Celebrant also wants us to play with a lot of creatures. Yeah, the black-white deck looks pretty solid. Do we need to add green to this deck? I don't think it's necessary. Or four drops are already pretty crowded with the three Planeswalkers, maybe some of the Silver Wings. So adding in Storif doesn't seem needed. We also don't need a ton of ramp in this deck. So Mana Geode would be mostly for the mana fixing and not really for the ramp since we're only playing 1.5 and 1.6 at the moment. So I don't think it's worth it to splash green in this deck. Even though that would be an option with Plaza and Geodes fixing. Just don't think uh, the upside is there. Need to make a couple of cuts here to get the deck down to 40 cards. Anything we might have missed in the sideboard that we're not currently playing. Double checking Watley here to see if she's maybe worth it. Plays okay with the Taskmaster. Bit of upside with the Reaver and the Salbrunt. Plays okay with the Light Shield and the Crowvot if we want to run that. But overall, doesn't seem quite worth it here. And we're playing Watley mostly for the static ability. The life gain is a nice upside, but that's not the reason why we play the card. Let's take a look here. Uh, the four drops are a little bit too crowded. I think I prefer the Silver Wing over the Crow Vault, so that's an easy cut. I uh, don't know if we need both Silver Wings, could be that we just need one. Then looking at the three drops, Battalion's not amazing, but since we are such a creature-centric deck at the end of the day, uh, the Battalion might be good enough. Plays well with Sorin and Nahiri, giving first strike makes it easier to attack. Uh, plays pretty well with Pegasus, of course. And if it ends up trading and dying, maybe we can get it back with the Taskmaster. So Battalion might be good enough here. Uh, the Light Shield has a bit of synergy with the Apparition. Uh, that's a major reason to want the Light Shield. Plus one counter could maybe throw off the opponent's blocking situation as well, which is nice. And uh, we can attack with the Light Shield as a third creature for the Battalion. So if the opponent uh, doesn't have a ton of three-powered creatures out there to kill the Light Shield, we could maybe even attack with it unpunished and make sure we can get that counter on the Battalion. Because we're kind of lacking three drops, I could see the Light Shield being fine in this deck. And then the Finisher is quite good. So maybe the Light Shield is cuttable, otherwise I think I like all the threes. Looking at the two drops, I think Apparition is probably good enough. We have a lot of Planeswalkers, we have a decent amount of a mass synergy. So the proliferate seems quite good. A martyr for the cause is potentially cuttable. Probably one of our weaker two drops. Um, even though I just mentioned proliferate is good. It's a lot better if we can do it every turn on a, an evasive creature. As opposed to a 2-2 that does it once when it dies and the opponent has a bit of control over when it happens. So martyr is definitely on the cutting block here. Uh, Taskmaster seems decent. Doesn't help us protect our Planeswalkers if we play it later in the game, since it enters tapped. But still, a 2-3 for two, 2 in a deck that wants to be playing a lot of creatures seems good. Then the Reaver. We don't have a ton of sacrifice synergies in this deck, necessarily. And it's kind of weird that we ended up with so many good 2-drops, since looking at some of the other 2-drops in the format, there don't appear to be a ton of great 2-drops that we want to play. Like most of them fall into the Martyr for the Cause category, as opposed to the Taskmaster and uh, Lazotep Reaver category. But we opened kind of a weird pool with a lot of good 2-drops between Taskmaster, Apparition, Reaver, Celebrant, Invasion. 
that uh, Reaver might actually be cuttable here, but uh, we'll see. For now, we'll cut to Martyr. Uh, Reaver may be cuttable if we need to shave some twos. Vampire Opportunist might just be weaker than Reaver, even though it provides us with a relevant late game mana sink. How many mana sinks does our deck have? Not that many. So, could be that we want a Opportunist anyway. So I could see the Opportunist still being fine. And then the Celebrant seems okay. Uh, we're gonna be trading some creatures. A mass token might end up dying a few times. And this doesn't mention non-token, so any creature that dies will drain some life. So it seems good enough. What our deck is really lacking is some sort of sacrifice outlet to take advantage of all these amass tokens from Reaver and to synergize with the Celebrant. So it's unfortunate that we didn't open any of those sacrifice outlets, since we also have the Taskmaster to return creatures. So something to sacrifice our creatures and gain an advantage would have been nice. Alright, so how many more cuts do we need to make? Two. And do we need the Behemoth? Don't have much at the top of our curve, so it would be nice to have something there. A 5-4 is not amazing, but it's a reasonable filler card. So yeah, maybe we cut one Silver Wing since we're a bit heavy on the 4s. If I cut uh, Behemoth, what do I think about cutting a land and adding a 2-drop? It's not unreasonable. Although the 2-drop we would add is not like incredibly powerful here. Like we would be adding a Martyr for the cause or Dusk Mantle Operative. Those aren't really cards that are gonna do a whole lot. So I don't think it's worth uh, the inconsistency in this case. Since we do have some mana intensive cards, we've got some mana sinks in Taskmaster, so I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we'll try 17. Yeah, we could consider cutting something for a second Silverwing, although we have so many 4-drops already that I'm kind of hesitant to add another one. Alright, we're on the play. Not an amazing hand. 4 planes means that if we draw any more planes, those are pretty terrible draws. And if we draw a Swamp, which we need for Cruelty, we risk flooding out a little bit. We do have Apparition into Battalion, which is a nice start. This one's somewhat uh, questionable. Probably have to keep, but uh, I'm not looking forward to drawing more planes. Up against a red-green. Turn to Druid as a 2-2. Pretty far from casting Vraska here, sadly. I will not proliferate onto the opponent's creature. Alright. Turn 3, Domri. So we want to try and pressure their Planeswalker here. Or we could take it out with the Prisoner Realm. So they fight right away, getting value from their Polenbrine Druid. But now we can Prisoner Realm the Druid and kill Domri, which seems nice. And don't want a finisher that we can't cast. Alright, so we traded some resources here. Alright, uh, Taskmaster that we can't cast. So yeah, our hand did not develop the way we were hoping. With a bunch of black cards and a 6-drop. The Crunch can't attack alone, it can block alone. Are we fine trading here? I guess we are, since this Crunch is kind of going to be a, a problem later. Opponent takes it. And Druid. Puts the counter on the Crunch so they can block with it. 
Alright, so now we can't attack with a battalion. Nahiri, we probably don't want to play right now, otherwise they can pressure her with a crunch and potentially kill her. Gotta wait for their creatures to be tapped. Angrath. Alright, that's scary. Thanks for six. Make a 2-2 two -two token. Alright, there's our black mana at long last. So we probably need to use our cruelty to kill the zombie token here and then try and finish off Angrath and then next turn we can try and Nahiri the Crunch. If we Nahiri the Crunch right now, they get another Angrath activation, things get out of hand. Hopefully they don't have an answer for the battalion here. Crawl Stinger. Down to 8 we go. Another Prison Realm is nice. So we could go Taskmaster plus Prison Realm, or we could just Nahiri, deal with the Crunch, trade off Battalion for Stinger if they attack, and then Nahiri would still be at 1 after the Druid deals 1 to it. So that seems nice. Keep Prison Realm for something else. X equals four. You can't escape the avalanche. No attacks. And then the taskmaster will eventually be able to get back something from the graveyard. Double black. All right. Now we're hitting our stride. So what's the play? We can Vraska. But then we can't Taskmaster, or we can just play the Angel. I guess we play the Angel here. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so struggled a little bit with our land drops early, but our opponent ended up uh, drawing a few more lands than they maybe wanted to. And we were able to outgrind them. Thanks to some removal spells, clearing a path so we could pressure their Planeswalkers. So having that 3-2 in play, that's able to pressure their planeswalkers after we remove a blocker was pretty key there. Alright, so, so far so good. This time we're on the draw with a two lander that really wants to draw a swamp. If we draw any third land we can play battalion, any fourth land lets us play silverwing, and as soon as we draw a swamp we can basically cast our entire hand. So I think I'm okay keeping this. On the play I would maybe mulligan on the draw, I think we can keep. We also have more swamps and planes in our deck. Opponent has a reaver on two. Right, perfect. Play our own reaver, I think. Although maybe it's better to play the taskmaster. A reaver sets up our finisher a little bit better, so that's nice. Also sets up the battalion a little bit better. Yeah, I think I'll lead with reaver. Opponent on Sultai. And contentious plan, make their token a 2 2. Alright, hopefully they proliferate our token as well. Alright, no such luck. Yeah, there's probably not many situations where you want to proliferate onto the opponent's stuff in this format. So if they attack with their 2 2 token, do we double block is a question. Alright, they're not gonna offer, so that answers that question. Alright, so we could just play the battalion here. Seems fine. No attacks. And then try and set up our battalion attack next turn. And then we can use a finisher to maybe finish off any blocker. Although if they keep both creatures back, then we would lose both our Reaver and our Amass token, so... It's a little bit sketchy to attack here. Yeah, we might use a Cruelty to clear a path, set up better attacks. And then we can use a finisher afterwards, we'll see. Dismissal, their own creature. It's a fancy play. And then replay the Reaver, make a 4-4. Four -four. That does play right into our cruelty plan. 
Now we can cruelty the 4-4 before it gets any bigger. And then attack with everyone. We lose a 1-1, one -one, but we gain a plus one counter. Which uh, is probably worth it. So yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, the army tokens change art based on how many counters it has, which is pretty neat. Ooh, Bleeding Edge could be good. So we could cast this right away to shrink the Behemoth, although it would still have three power, so it can still trade for battalions, so it doesn't really help us much. So I think the plan here is probably just to play Silverwing and pass. We could attack with both if they block or reaver with the behemoth we can finish it with a finisher but they're maybe trading for the battalion which we don't necessarily want them to considering we can maybe put another counter on it maybe use bleeding edge yeah they would probably trade battalion for behemoth i think we just play the silver wing for now yeah we could attack with just a reaver but then they block with probably their reaver and i don't want to use a finisher to do the finishing on the reaver so we'll play the silver wing add an evasive threat to the board Opponent's got a Vivian's Grizzly on top. Doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Maybe it tells us that, I guess, I don't know, opponent's trade three colors here since Dismissal and Plan aren't really cards you would want to splash. Same with the Grizzly, and they're playing some cheap black cards as well. So who knows? Maybe they opened a bit of mana fixing in our three colors. Of course, Black Green can allow some pretty stretched mana bases. Fifth land is good. So opponent play the Grizzly, says go with three mana up. And they tap their blue, so they probably don't have any blue cards in hand, unless they're expensive. So what's our plan now? If we were to attack with everyone, Battalion grows, but they can still trade with the Behemoth. Doesn't seem quite worth it here. I guess if we attack with everyone, they might block the Reaver with the Grizzly, and then we can finish the Grizzly. So it's not the worst. Alright, I guess I'm down. We could Bleeding Edge the Behemoth before attacking, so it doesn't trade for the Battalion, but then we can't play the Finisher. And if they trade, it's not the end of the world. Opponent respecting the Vraska's Finisher here, not blocking with the Grizzly. That's okay. We'll still play the Finisher here, I think. Just want to add the 3-2 to the board. Play Taskmaster. Key Bleeding Edge to maybe kill something on the spot. Taskmaster can return the battalion. Alright. Opponent with more amassing. Amass 3 this time. 6 mana means we can cast Bleeding Edge and use the Taskmaster's ability. So if we were to attack with everyone... We can use Blading Edge to finish off the 3-3 three, three foot blocks or 2-3, for example, and then still use the Taskmaster. Or we could just play the Angel, and then this turn just attack with Finisher and Silverwing. I think I like attacking with everyone, getting back Battalion, get our value while we can, and see if we can maybe use Bleeding Edge. So, sure. We're tapping our mana in a bit of an awkward way here, keeping up double blank, because we want to be able to cast Bleeding Edge. Let's see if the Grizzly trades. Goes in front of the Reaver. Alright. So we only get to use Bleeding Edge to kill one of the two creatures. I think we're still killing the zombie army, since if it grows even more, we might not be able to attack into it with the finisher anymore even though the Grizzly could provide some advantage going late. And next turn we can maybe drop the Angel. Why did we give up the 1-2? There's always a chance that uh, 
they don't block the way they did. Or that maybe they didn't block with a 3-3, fearing another Frasca's finisher. They block with a 2-3 instead, and we bleeding edge to that one. Who knows? So, picked up an Enforcer, which is nice. The ground is pretty stalled, so we can still tank with the Silver Wing, and then we probably just want to add Angel to the board instead of Enforcer. Pretty likely that if our opponent had removal, they would have used it on the Silver Wing by now. They can cast something expensive here. They've had a few cards in hand for a while, so maybe the Nurture unlocked something new. They haven't used the Grizzly's ability yet. Right, it's going to be Charity Extractor 1-5 Lifelink. Doesn't deal with the Flyers here. If they play their own Flyer, we can tap it down with Enforcer. So they really need removal for these Flyers. Alright, Band Together. Using two creatures to take out the Angel, fair enough. Nurture is tapped, but now with the Extractor it's not going to be easy to make any good attacks. Well, if they answer the Silver Wing 2 here, we could be in a bit of trouble. So any good attacks on the ground? Don't think so. Keep land in hand, since there's a few discard effects in black. Maybe we end up with a card in our hand that we don't want to play right away. And our curve stops at 6 anyway. We do have the... Opportunists as a mana sink that requires more mana. Opponent looking at their graveyard. Maybe they have a way to get back creatures from the graveyard here. This would be a good time to draw some of our planeswalkers. Ooh, command the Dreadhorde. Getting back our Sunblade Angel. Opponent drops a 2. But now they're just dead on board. Unless they have a trick. Any reason to put a counter on the Silver Wing? Don't think so. Alright. So 2 and 0 so far, and we haven't needed our powerful 2 drop yet. Alright, we're on the draw with a powerful hand if we can pick up. Another couple lands here. Turn to Taskmaster regardless. And then Battalion, Bleeding Edge, Cruelty at 3, Soren at 4. Seems good. Alright, another Planeswalker. So hopefully our next couple draws our lands. Swamp would be the best land to draw here. Paradise Druid, it's a good one. Alright, draw our land, perfect. So we have access to Bleeding Edge next turn, should the Druid tap. We could maybe take it out. Another three-color deck. Ooh, Guard Mage. That's a good one. So we even picked up the Finisher, so we have two ways of finishing off the Guard Mage. If they block. So I will attack. Opponent blocks. I think I like playing the... Finisher here more than Bleeding Edge, although it's close. Finisher puts a 3-2 in play as opposed to a 2-2 with Bleeding Edge. But Bleeding Edge doesn't require as much setup as a Finisher. So I feel like we just get our Finisher value while we can. And maybe Bleeding Edge can kill the Druid if it taps once again. Yeah, and a Finisher could maybe trade and we can get it back with the Taskmaster later. It's also a good point. So we just need one more land to unlock our entire hand here. Ooh, Pride Mates. Let's see where they put a uh, counter, if anywhere. Would love for them to put it on the Druid so we can kill it and... Start attacking their Planeswalker. Either way, we can Cruelty the Pride Mate and finish off their Planeswalker. Yeah, having early board presence in this format to pressure Planeswalkers with after maybe clearing a blocker seems pretty key. So, let's go for it. I've learned 
We picked up our 6 drop in the meantime, so if we draw lands we're fine. In the meantime we can still play Bleeding Edge and Battalion, so can still make some plays as well as maybe use Taskmaster to get something back. We are out of removal spells for big creatures, so we might get punished for using the finisher instead of the Bleeding Edge earlier. And a Jani. Our opponent has a Wombo Combo, a Jani plus Paradise Druids. Gives it Vigilance, so we'll keep having Hexproof. Alright, we're still happy attacking a Jani here. And if they want to trade, that's fine. Then Taskmaster can maybe get Finisher back later. And then just play Battalion for now. That's a weird block, so do they have a trick here? Titanic Growth maybe, or Giant Growth. Alright, fair enough. But now the creature is tapped and we get to finish it with a Bleeding Edge. Alright, not bad. Vivian's Grizzly. So if they put a counter on it, we don't have any great attacks on a Jani. So we don't have double white, so we can't play Enforcer plus Celebrant this turn, sadly. It might be worth it to throw away a creature just to make sure we kill this Ajani. Or we could play Battalion and then preserve our creatures to set up a counter with the Battalion next turn. So what's likely going to happen? Our opponent's going to plus, gain 3, Ajani at 2. Uh, if they add another creature to the board, then attacking Ajani is going to become a lot trickier. If they have a 2-mana removal spell here, then attacking and suiciding our creatures is going to be pretty bad, since then they get to kill both and keep a Jani. So it's a tricky spot. It might be correct to just play Enforcer, say go, and then try and set up for an attack next turn. I think I try and kill a Jani while we can and hope they don't have a 2-mana removal spell here. And then I think I'm going to play Enforcer second main instead of Celebrant main phase 1. Maybe we play Battalion, we'll see here. Alright, so we did get to kill a Jani, that's good. So, now we have to decide between Enforcer and Battalion. Considering we have these 4 mana Planeswalkers in play, I'm kind of liking playing the Battalion more, since Nahiri also promotes attacking, same with Sorin. Enforcer's more of a defensive play. I think we played a Battalion. It's also easier to play the Enforcer later in the game for just one mana. Don't need the tap ability right away. Since we want to be playing our 4 drops instead of spending our mana using the Enforcer's ability. Oh yeah, Enforcer also plays very well with Nahiri. Can tap something down and then kill it. Spellkeeper weird. Anything they can return. They can return a Giant Growth. Take 3. Alright, planes off the top would be great. Alright. I'll settle with the Swamp. So Sorin can get back a finisher here. So we could attack with both. If they block, we can finish her the weird. And then Sorin will be at 1. So then the Grizzly can probably finish off Sorin unless we want to chum block. It's probably still fine. And then Grizzly is going to be tapped attacking Surin, so if we draw planes for Nahiri, we're in great shape. Ooh, instead our opponent with Stealth Mission. And a Charm Stray. Alright, so Surin's dead. But uh, still within range of Nahiri. And there's a planes, perfect. So we can kill the Grizzly. And we're pretty far ahead now. Battalion, and we still have s some nice cards left in hand here. 
and even a prison realm stray staying on defense. Um, I guess we'll play the Celebrant first in case something ends up dying here. Battalion getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, the biggest downside of Sealed is that you get fewer wild cards. But uh, overall, I would say it's worth it. Alright, GG's. Enforcer taps down Ceratok, and that's game. So we made nice use of Vraska's finisher and uh, other effects to finish off creatures after they've been dealt damage. So that's definitely something you'll have to learn playing against black decks in War of the Spark is that uh, Vraska's finisher could come down at any point and finish off a creature that's been dealt damage, or a Planeswalker even. Alright, so we're on the play with a hand without white mana this time. This one's sketchy if we don't draw white since we don't have any spell we can cast in the meantime. And we're on the play so we don't get that extra draw step. If we draw planes right away we would get to play turn 2 apparition, turn 3 pegasus, which is fine but it's not even all that impressive. I think we have to mulligan this. Alright, this is better. Got our Dreadhorde Invasion into Pegasus. Got us crying to a land here, hopefully. Alright, Swamp is good enough. Which Magic Duels of the Planeswalker game do I miss the most? Um, hard to say. They were all pretty similar. So got our turn 2 Dreadhorde Invasion, which is going to generate value over time. And hopefully at some point we'll gain the life back with a life-linking zombie. Up against blue-green. Dismissal, bouncing it, sure. It's only a temporary setback. Still gonna replay the invasion. It's kind of weird that they use this on the invasion itself instead of waiting and maybe bouncing the token we get. Maybe they have another bounce spell somewhere. Opponent with a Toll of the Invasion, they were maybe hoping we wouldn't play the Invasion again and then snag it with a Discard spell. Luckily we replayed it right away. And the other hand is pretty stacked. Prison Realm and Obnixil's Cruelty, great removal spells, Pegasus, a great threat. Alright, I think we want to put some more stuff into play before worrying about the army token. Minus 5, minus 5 can still kill it even if they amass 3 next turn. And we can maybe deal with the token next turn. Also waiting on the removal spells is better if they have more amass stuff in hand. Because then uh, we kill a bigger creature and get more value essentially. I'll take 2. Sahili, so can't quite kill Sahili. Probably worth it to still attack the Planeswalker here, so we can maybe finish it off with a Pegasus next turn. And then keep up Cruelty. Don't need to kill the zombie token right away. Can probably keep Cruelty until end of turn here. And we'll play the land so we can play Angel if we draw another land. Our life total is dwindling, hopefully the Sunblade Angel can gain a bit of life back. Ooh, Bio Essence Hydra. That's a scary one. So Bio Essence Hydra, 4-4, four, four, enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each loyalty counter on a Planeswalker you control. Alright, so we can still kill it here with the Cruelty. So the perfect size for our removal spell. And I will use it end of turn here. Alright, so Sahili probably wants to die, and then we can play Opportunist. Maybe we'll trade that off. 
Could also keep the army token back to block their army token. We're probably not going to be using the opportunist anytime soon. Got the angel to play at 6 anyway. Although opportunist plus invasion is a nice combo too. Ooh, Storov. So that's why they were okay playing the Hydra since they had a Storov as well. That they wanted to maybe save from a removal spell. Alright, well. Kazminas. Transmutation, shrinking the Pegasus into a 1 1. Lazo Dap Reaver means that uh, we're just one turn away from a life linking zombie army. So want to leave back at least 4 power. Could also attack with the zombie army. And we would be fine if they trade off for the Lich. The Hydra did get exiled, so they can't return that one at least. I think I'm staying back with the token. Play a bit more passively here. Instead of trying to attack. Could be reasonable to attack with a 4-4, and then if they trade, then we get rid of the Lich that way. Ooh. And then we could play the, the Reaver to amass second main. God Eternal Kefnet, that's going to be hard to beat. 4-5 Flyer with more upside and very difficult to get rid of. So we basically have to rely on this uh, giant zombie army token to get there. It gains lifelink. If it attacks, can play the Sunblade Angel. So what happens if we attack with our zombie army? Opponent can double block with Kefnets and a 2-2. We would kill Kefnets. Still have blocks on the Lich. We lose our zombie army. The Angel can get a few attacks in and we get to rebuild the army with the invasion. It's not like we have good blocks on Kefnet and our life total is dwindling. Do have a few more removal spells in our deck, but not too many. We already use a Prison Realm and a Cruelty. Yeah, I think I'm down. Attack, see what they do. If they double block with Lich and the zombie, we get to trade off with both. And of course, if they take it, that's great. Alright, opponent took it. So we get to play the Angel. Hopefully we can kill uh, Storov if it tries to attack here. Can take the damage from Kafnet. Paradise Druid, that's fine. One more land and we get to activate the Opportunist. Opponent considering attacking with Storov here. How do we block if Storov attacks? Probably everything except the Angel. Alright, the zombie army keeps growing. We did pick up the land. So I think zombie army can attack. Nothing has really changed. And uh, take it from there. Opponent's gonna trade off Storov. Maybe chum block. Both are fine. Alright, just a chum block. So we'll play the land, we can use this at instant speed. Gain some more life back. So the invasion definitely doing some work here. Star of is attacking. I think I'm still fine triple blocking. Can get one activation of the opportunist. So what does it threaten to get back? Just the Sahili. I guess if we were to triple block, they still deal one trample damage and they still get Sahili back. But I don't think I want to throw away the Angel just to prevent uh, the trample damage here. Sahili is not the end of the world. Although it could provide a string of chum blockers for the zombie army, which is kind of annoying. Could also take it, let them get back Sahili and then just rely on the opportunist drain ability to maybe help us close out the game. Alright, I guess I'll take it. If we could prevent the trample damage with a triple block, I would be down. But since we don't... I don't think there's a great reason to block it, considering Sahili is the only thing they can get back here. If they go Sahili into Bounce Your Zombie Army token, we could be in a bit of trouble. So we get to drain them down to 9. And then maybe untap drain them down to 7. Ooh, Nissa as well. Make a token. Alright, Nissa can untap a land. So, things could get scary here. The land for us. 
Nissa 5 mana. Untaps a land, puts 3 counters on it. Also gains Vigilance. Ooh, Cruel Celebrant. So, what happens if we play Celebrant attack with everyone? Kefnat could go on Angel. Servo can chump the zombie army. 3-3 three, three goes in front of Opportunist. Doesn't seem amazing. If the zombie army attacks, they can just chump with the Servo. They could triple block. That would be fine. And the zombie army attacks their opponents since the Opportunist can threaten to drain them out. But yeah, Nissa is definitely a problem. We'll have to draw a removal spell at some points, otherwise the ultimate of Nyssa is going to win them the game. Alright, opponent actually goes for the triple block. I think that's good. Got rid of uh, Kefnet and now the Angel can maybe get some attacks in. Do we prefer draining with the Opportunist or playing the Celebrant is an interesting question. Opponent has nothing to get back with Storv at the moment. So I guess draining with Opportunist might actually be better. That plus Angel is maybe a way to win the game. Yeah, we're on the drain plan here. Yeah, we're not going to be attacking the opponent's Planeswalkers since they probably can get them back anyway with Storv at some point. We're just trying to close out the game quickly before Kefnet comes down again. Drain them with Opportunists. Tag them with Angel, and maybe Celebrant can help us close out the game as well. That's our plan now. Opponent has all the mana in the world. That's fine, that's not a flyer. So drain them down to 7, attack them down to 4, drain them down to 2. And then Opportunist can close out the game. And there's no way they're out racing us at the moment. Especially with Angel having... Vigilance here on first strike. So Opportunist ended up being quite important in this game. Nice mana sync. Silverwing is also nice. Is it better than you just activating the Opportunist here? Opportunist is kind of the the safer bet in a sense. Since it just closes out the game after two activations, after we tag them with the uh, Angel. So it might be better to just not play the Silverwing here. And just activating Opportunist twice is game over. They need to answer both Angel and Opportunist in one draw step. And they can't ultimate Nissa yet, so I think that's safer. Whereas if we play the Silver Wing, how could we lose? I guess they would need to answer both Flyers as well. Yeah, I guess had we played Celebrant and attacked with everyone, we might have had lethal. Although they could shun block with the Servo to prevent the drain. Either way, I think we're fine. Yeah, maybe Silver Wing plus Celebrant is fine. I don't know. It's kind of close. Geoids, so they're definitely dead. And there we go, sweet. So far so good. Turn to Dreadhorde Invasion. Definitely pulled its weight, so 4 no so far, not bad. All right, fine hand, two drop, three drop. Reaver plays great with battalion as well. Got a nice creature curve and a cruelty as removal on the play. And it's got some spicy Four mana Planeswalkers we can draw into as well. Let's see if Battalion survives. Gets hit by the Cruelty, fair enough. Let's take a look at their top card. Ooh, a celebration, so we kinda wanna end the game before they get to 7 mana here. Our hand is somewhat lacking pressure, so we might not be well equipped to end the game before this happens. We are good at prolonging the game ourselves. 
and Dreadhorde. So if we use a Cruelty or the Realm, they don't get the token. So I think we're okay using one of our removal spells. Question is which one? Probably Cruelty, considering Realm can get rid of Planeswalkers too. Although the Scry 1 right now would be useful at helping us find more action off the top and maybe Scry lands to the bottom. So it's kind of close. I think I'm using the Cruelty, although Cruelty is an instant, so that's an upside 2 over Realm. I guess I'll use a Realm just because it helps us dig towards action and we can use Cruelty at instant speed. Alright, bottom the plane, so we essentially drew a card here since we definitely didn't need an extra land. Attack. And then I think we should play the land even though there's discard two effects in the set. Just in case we draw the Angel so we can uh, play it next turn. Stinger. That's fine. So we'll have to see here whether or not we feel inclined to kill it. A ghost form. I think we'll play it still. And hopefully keep cruelty to remove a flying blocker. Although in black green there's not too many. Wolf, we don't have to answer at the moment. More lands, while well, we floated out quite a bit. Now I guess we'll keep lands in hand. Does our opponent feel comfortable attacking? They do. No great blocking situation here. Maybe the cruelty can remove their next follow-up and we get in some more damage. Leyline Prowler. So I think it's okay to kill it here. And that gets us in more damage. More lands, wow. Alright, I guess we'll play them out now. That way if we draw an opportunist we can maybe activate it the turn we draw it. And Grizzly, alright, so still no answer to the Silverwing. Not a Reaver. Doesn't change our attacking situation. Alright, hopefully Silverwing gets there. Can always try and go wide. Five mana, do they have an answer? They're hovering over the Grizzly, so... Don't think there's many one-drop flyers here. Maybe they have the Sacrifice card to destroy a creature. Alright, let's get in there. Well, <laughs> we drew two spells this game, a Lasso Tap Reaver and a Prison Realm, but we still got there thanks to our nice aggressive start. Alright, 5-0, not bad. Alright, on the play, with a pretty aggressive looking hand, which is great as soon as we draw third land here. And given our track record, we should be okay keeping this and drawing a land. But yeah, in all seriousness, we have two two drops we can cast anyway, so even if we miss for a turn, it's not a disaster. And leading with a Taskmaster, which can attack past most two drops. And hopefully take to the skies with Pegasus on three. I don't think Ghost Form is a very good card. We already have a bunch of creature recursion. Alright, third land, perfect. Not a black white deck. Alright, so we've got our clock established here. Let's see if they have a removal spell. They probably do, considering they're in the color pair that probably has the most removal spells. With their own Pegasus. Alright, I mean, it could be okay to use Cruelty. I imagine our opponent trades here, considering they're behind. And I kind of want to keep attacking with the Pegasus. I guess we can also just play Nahiri. And then our creatures have First Strike. And they can block our Pegasus. And if they attack Nahiri, that's okay. I guess that's reasonable too, and then keep the cruelty for next turn. Alright, sure. Justice, 
using the secret mode on Nahiri here. And no Nahiri activations for now. So if her opponent ever tries to race us, Nahiri can kill a creature. Worst case is that they play a bunch of removal spells here. And uh, get rid of our pressure that way. Alright, Firemind's Vessel, so they're gonna go big next turn. This Nahiri cannot deal with tapped artifacts, unlike the previous iteration. Prison Realm only gets rid of creatures or planeswalkers, not artifacts. So we're just gonna attack and then we gotta decide if we wanna play a finisher or opportunist here. Don't think the finisher is gonna come into play anytime soon with the ability. We've got the cruelty to answer a pretty large creature here, as well as Persian Realm, so I'll just put the 3-2 in play, which is more mana efficient. That way if we draw land, we can maybe play Opportunist plus a 3-mana removal spell next turn. Presenting a lot of pressure with our creatures here, making it difficult for the opponent to block and attack us back. So hopefully we can keep that up. But they will be able to do something pretty scary here. All right, Dam Breaker. Survives the cruelty, but we can prison realm it and keep up the pressure that way. Yeah, Nahiri is also pretty nice uh, with a finisher since we can minus for just one and then finish off with a finisher. But considering there are points on the defensive, Nahiri is not going to minus anytime soon. So we can prison realm the dam breaker, attack, play opportunist, seems good. Light shields. It's not a terrible draw, it's not an exciting draw. Don't think we need it. What do we get flying? Does it matter? Doesn't matter. Alright. So we had a nice aggressive draw, drew the lands when we needed to. Didn't even use a minus on Nahiri, just a passive ability here. Giving our creatures first strike was good enough. Not many equipment in the set. But yeah, that's the nice thing about Nahiri. If you're ahead, the first strike is relevant. If you're behind, you can minus to kill something. So she's good on almost every board state. Worst creature. Just a 1-3 flyer at the moment. Still have our cruelty to clear our blocker. Haven't had to use a Taskmaster's ability. Spark Harvest killing Nahiri. Shattered. And then Prison Realm to get rid of one of our creatures. Pretty sure they're still dead on board here. Alright, sweet. Alright, 6-0. Pretty spotless run so far. Alright, and we've got another good-looking hand. Enforcer into Taskmaster, into Shield, into Sorin. Enforcer doubling up as removal. Anything that will change the metagame? Difficult uh, question to answer. It's pretty early to tell. But uh, definitely a lot of cards that will have an impact on standard, for sure. I think we're leaning Taskmaster. Opponent on Jund. Arlen's Wolf. Alright, so we could play the Light Shield, put a counter on Taskmaster so it can keep attacking. Or we can just tap down the wolf attack, play Reaver, which is also fine. Keep the light shield to maybe put a counter at, at some other points. I think I like uh, playing the Reaver here and attacking. Could 
could have also attacked and offered a trade and then maybe use Enforcer to tap down a blocker end of turn. Could have been reasonable too. Puts a counter on the wolf. Attacks. So planes for Nahiri would be excellent. Instead Apparition, still pretty decent here with the Light Shield and the Amass synergies. How likely is the opponent to trade off Druid for our Amass token? We don't actually want to make the trade considering we've got Apparition incoming. So maybe we keep the token back and just attack with Reaver and Taskmaster. And then we can use Enforcer to tap down the Wolf. And Enforcer plus Nahiri is also quite a wombo combo. And then next turn we can maybe drop Light Shield and proliferate onto two things. Cyclops, 4-4, four, four. and we even drew the land. So we've got a ton of options now. We can play any of our three Planeswalkers, or we can play Light Shield plus Activate Enforcer. Kind of like Light Shields, and then we can uh, proliferate, keep their stuff tapped down. We can tap down the Cyclops to get a nice attack in. Seems good. And then where do we put the counter? Probably on the Reaver to diversify a little bit. Would turn this into a 3-4 at the end of it. Although I guess Taskmaster becoming a 4-5 lines up a little bit better on this board. So it's close. Could also put it on the Apparition itself, but that seems overkill. Even though it would start growing the Flyer more and more. So it's kind of close. Because if the Apparition keeps attacking, we get to keep growing the rest of our team, we're still in fine shape. So we'd rather not uh, present uh, a juicy target for our opponent to kill. I think this is fine. And we could jump with a light shield here if we wanted to, maybe get it back with Taskmaster. Opponent stays back. Alright, so we've got a, a wealth of options once again. Fifth land means we can tap with Enforcer and use Nahiri to kill something. Vraska plus Apparition is also pretty sweet. All our Planeswalkers pretty much with Apparition are pretty sweet. I don't mind just playing Vraska, making a token, and then this turn we can kind of chill, attack with Apparition only. And then tap down with Enforcer end of turn, and then maybe we get to tap down a, a second blocker in our turn as well. Seems okay. Nothing to get back with Sorin. And if we want a Nahiri, we have to tap right away to kill something. Could of course also tap down a Cyclops, and then Nahiri first strike means the Reaver can get in there. I think I'm gonna play it a little bit more patiently. So Vraska minus. Attack with Apparition. And we get to proliferate. Sweet, so we got a clean 7 win run here. And we pretty much got to see all our cards in action. Solar Blaze, nice uh, sweeper effect. Not sure if it's gonna replace Deafening Clarion in the red-white control decks anytime soon. But uh, could be an interesting card. If you've got some high toughness creatures, they can uh, survive the damage. Although, of course, if they had at least three toughness, they could survive Clarion anyway. Uh, otherwise, good cards in the pack. Thunder Drake is pretty nice. Band Together is great removal. Aid the Fallen is good if you have enough Planeswalkers, would have been pretty good in our previous deck. Got a Chandra Fire Artisan, 4 mana for loyalty, plus 1 for some card advantage, 
Although the turn she comes into play, you don't often get much value unless it's late in the game. And then when loyalty counters are removed, so if the opponent attacks her, they also end up getting burnt. And then a minus 7, remove 7 loyalty, so deals at least 7 damage. And then can provide a ton of advantage as well. Other good cards include Aven Eternal, Great Blue Common, 2-2 Flyer, and a Mass 1. Vizier of the Scorpion is great too, giving a zombie armies death touch. And uh, the Raptor is also a solid 2-drop. Defiant Strike is good 5-mana removal spell. Grizzly is an okay 3-drop as well. So pretty stacked back. And Dreadhorde Invasion just got to see it in action in the sealed. Great card. And uh, might also have some constructed applications, maybe as a way to provide sacrifice fodder in some of the aristocrat style decks. Or maybe some sort of a mass zombie token deck. So great first pick. Guard Mage is also great. Uh, Neoform, a little bit less exciting than the Guard Mage. The Herald of the Dreadhorde is also solid. The rest, not so much. Alright, so that was a fun sealed event there. Got a nice bunch of packs and gems. Had some fun along the way as well. But otherwise, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.